Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. It's so nice to have you here. Um, so we are going to do a leopard today or start on a leopard today. Um, <laughs> sorry, I have the window open and I'm sure that that airplane is probably pretty loud. Uh, anyway, so um, I recently finished another drawing of, uh, of a tiger and um, I love the way it came out and I decided that I wanted to do a companion piece to go with it. So um, this is the tiger that I just recently finished and I did this on drafting film. And um, so I thought it would be cool to do a leopard um, to go along with it so that I can hang them together. So that is the plan. That is what we're going to do. So this particular um, leopard comes from Pixabay. And this is how the original um, uh, photo will be downloaded to you. And basically, all I did in my um, in my on my iPad um, was crop the image um, closer to this, you know, to kind of the size that I wanted to do, and I actually flipped it as well. So, um, oh, and and I also lightened the background um, in um, in that other app. What is that? What's that other app called? I can't think of it. Um, it's the one I use all the time, Snapseed. I also lightened the background, even though um, I did decide later on to do the um, the kind of, you know, beigey white kind of um, background. I'm gonna, that's what we'll do on this one as well. Um, but I just wanted to show you how I got to this point. Um, in case you download the image and you go, wait a minute, that's not what the image looked like. And I flipped it because I wanted, I wanted the um, the the animals coming in from uh, opposite directions, looking in opposite directions, basically. So um, don't be afraid to alter your photo if you decide that you want to, you know, that you like the photo but you wish it was a little bit different in whatever way so you can um, just easily do that so my printed version may not be the exact size of what I'm of what I've got going on here I used um, the Da Vinci Eye app to get this down on my um, drafting film and um, it is it is on the back side, so I flipped the image back so that it was opposite of what I wanted it to be. Um, used the Da Vinci Eye and did the did the drawing down on the paper um, on the back side of the paper. Now, there's a lot of people that like to use that like to put their reference photo on a separate sheet of paper behind or their reference sketch, I should say, not necessarily their reference photo, but their reference sketch. Um, if you do that, be sure that you print it on the smoothest paper possible. Um, if that's what, because you, whatever texture you put behind the drafting film, that's what's going to show. And um, I actually used um, some very textured paper um, for parts of my lion um, it was kind of a kind of a waffly uh, scrapbook paper, so you, I, you can kind of see the, the the kind of waffly pattern of the paper. And I actually used that to my advantage when doing the tiger, um, who has a little bit longer hair. I don't I don't think we'll be able, we'll need to use that on this one. But if you're doing one that has longer hair, um, putting a textured piece of paper behind will help you get that um, that kind of crinkly, wavy um, fur um, without having to wiggle your pencil. It, um, it was great, and I will use that technique again for sure. Um, so, let's see, what are, what else? I guess that's it, I think, I guess we can get started. 
um, almost, we can almost get started. I did want to show you that um, I'm going to change the color of this cat's eyes. When I did a, um, a search, when I was looking for um, a leopard to, um, to do, um, I really liked this one. I liked the coloring. I liked everything about it, except that there wasn't enough of the rest of him to work for me for what I wanted to do. But a lot of the leopard eyes are this kind of greeny, you know, greenish, grayish color with amber. Um, and I like that. So I'm actually going to do that for the eyes on this cat. Um, that's why these two look a little bit different because I was playing around with um, my colored pencil right here on top of the photo to kind of see um, if that's what I wanted to do. And yes, the answer is yes, that is what I, I do want to do. Um, so I will be changing the, um, the eye color. In fact, we can just do that right now just so that we don't get confused. Um, this is, I mean, obviously this is not exact, but um, we will be kind of going a little bit greener in our cats. So, all right, I guess that is it. I actually also might lighten up the nose a little bit, which I also did here with some color pencil because the reference photo is quite, quite dark and I would like to see a little bit more um, of the color in the nose as well. So, all right, that is it. We're gonna just kind of get started and um, I will try my very hardest to let you know what pencils I am using as I'm using them. I know sometimes I do forget and I apologize for that, but I will have all the pencils that I used um, for the, um, in, the, in, the, in the series um, down in the description box below. All right, so I think we can go ahead and go. I'm going to maybe um, push in a little bit. I think that's probably enough. And I will move this over a bit. Let's see. Maybe I will do this. because I am going to, as I often do, start with the eyes. And I'm also going to put a glove on. I did um, buy some, some gloves, um, mostly to use with the drafting film because I don't want to get my um, my oils on the um, on the paper, so if you see weird black, um, and I cut the fingers off, so <laughs> just the the two fingers they were a little bit um, I don't know they were bugging me, so I get hot, you know. So I wanted to let my fingers breathe. I mostly wanted it to cover up the palm of my hand, so I think that will or the you know, side of my palm, I think that'll do it. All right, let us give this a go and see what we can do. I enjoyed doing that tiger so much. Um, I was really kind of bummed when it was over, but it, I was really happy with the way it turned out. So hopefully we can get something Similar. So the um, the polychromos, especially, um, I think. Oh, let's see. We didn't draw. We didn't draw our outside lines. Hmm. Okay. Hate it when I do that. Um, that's okay. We will just use the reference photo. I did draw um, a lot more um, of the of the spots, and I was a little bit more careful about my photo. Although you'd never know that <laughs> since I messed up here. 
but I did try and put a little bit more of the reference photo sketch down, hopefully to save some time. Um, yeah, so. Uh, what did I do here? Oh my goodness. Okay. And the problem is my my drawing is not the exact size as my reference photo, so I really can't do that. So it's just going to be, we're just going to have to do it and, and hope that we get it right. So this is probably going to go like this. We'll just work it till we get it right. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yes. Um, polychromos. Polychromos absolutely does fade on this paper. Um, I don't know where it goes. It's very bizarre. Um, nobody could answer my question as to what happens to the um, pigment that I put down. Um, I know in a... Um, in regular paper that has tooth, you know, a lot of the times you'll go in and um, the, the, the pigment will be gone. And it's because the pigment has sunk down into the tooth of the paper. Um, however, there is no tooth on drafting film, so I have no idea what happens to it, but I will tell you that it does disappear a little bit. It does, all of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute, I know that was darker a few hours ago. And yes, yes, it probably was. I don't know where it goes, but just be aware of that. So. Um, a lot of the times you'll have to go back in and darken some areas. But I do also use um, other pencils other than polychromos to help darken my blacks. So we'll be using luminance and polys. This is Cold Gray 5. And I've decided, <laughs> I've decided not to worry about the length of the video, not to worry about how long things take. I'm just going to do what I do because that's the only way to get my best work. In previous videos, a lot of the time I've worried about like, oh, it's gonna, it's taking so long, and this is so so long and boring. <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about it anymore. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do what I do, and hopefully, you guys will come along for the ride. Okay, so let's put some um, earth green in here. Get that started. I kind of want to, I'm tempted to stick this in here if I can, so that you can at least see kind of where I'm headed with these colors. Remember when you're using drafting film, unless you purposefully want a very, very sharp line, um, you know, like for specifically very, sh you know, fur, um, 
be sure to use a, a, a slightly duller point on your pencil um, or else the lines will be very strong um, and very sharp because drafting film it does not take much at all to make a mark on your paper and you're actually better off going lightly and building up your layers all right this is a luminance brown ochre Um, I am working on my um, Nina Desert Storm because I particularly like to be able to see my, my light colors. And when I work on a um, colored paper behind it, then I can see my whites and my whites stand out, which I like um, very much. So... It's kind of up to you how you want to work it or what you want to do, but that's what I do. When I first started doing drafting film, I worked on white and on white paper. Um, and there were a lot of times when I let the white be white. Okay, I'm going to move this um, now, but you can kind of see what I was, where I was going with my color scheme there. Um, this is um, burnt umber polychromos, um, and I found that when I was working on white paper, I I would quite often let the whites, that the white paper be the white on the drafting film. And I discovered personally that I don't like that as much as um, actually putting the white on the paper. And you will see in a little bit how the, um, the luminance actually leaves a texture on the drafting film. So when I use luminance for hair, and then I kind of glaze over the top of it, um, the luminance kind of shows through because it kind of kind of, um, uh, I don't want to say excess or resist, but the, the other colors just kind of float right on top of it. This is um, Cold Gray 3, but I don't think it's quite dark enough, so I'm going to go with Cold Gray 4 in the um, Polychromos. And I might even go darker than that. Let's try, do we want to try maybe dark sepia? Hmm. Okay, let's um, try cold gray six in polychromos first. We want to make sure that we have a um, shadow and, you know, scratch that. I don't know what else. Let's do a warm, let's do warm. Let's do warm gray five in the polychromos instead. And maybe we need to go even darker. So this is six. There we go. That's that's better. That's better. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to use dark sepia. And we're going to um, make a uneven edge on this pupil. I'm 
pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So just so that we don't um, forget kind of exactly what we did, let's do that over here, at least, at the very least, on the pupil. I have my grandson um, through two days a week and something just doesn't feel right about me putting regular TV on while I have him. I feel like I need to, it's my responsibility to put kids stuff on the TV. So I'll say we watched, but it was really, it was really mostly me. He was too busy using me as a jungle gym and climbing around <laughs> doing other things. But um, where I was going with this was for the very first time ever, um, I watched the um, Lion King, the cartoon. I watched the Lion King cartoon. That was white. And this is earth green. And my first thought, <laughs> my first thought when um, Simba's dad died was, what are they, like, how can they do that? What are they doing? This is a kid's, this is a kid's movie. And I was very upset. <laughs> I was very upset. Until my husband reminded me that, you know, they did the same thing in Bambi. Um, I'm like, okay, you're right, they did. So, after... Um, I watched the cartoon, Brown Ochre Pol uh, Luminance. After I watched the cartoon, immediately after, I watched the live action version of The Lion King. And I was super, well, I had lots of emotions. I was super duper imp impressed, I guess. I found it really cool that the, um, that the live action is almost frame for frame, exactly the same as the cartoon. Um, so that was quite impressive to me. I thought that was cool. Um, but the other part, and I, I felt this way after I watched um, The Jungle Book as well, but it's been a while since I watched The Jungle Book live, live action. So once again, it was amazing to me at how they did the animation on that, on that movie, on that, um, on both of those movies, actually, but specifically The Lion King, I was blown away. I mean, these animals look <laughs> like they're animal actors and that they're, that they're doing what, <laughs> what they're told to do, which is, of course, ridiculous, you know, and, you know, it's all CG, but it was done so well, and I could not take my eyes off Cold Grey 3. I could not take my eyes off the screen. It was so incredible. And I hope that Disney makes more movies like that because I, I loved it so much. Um, but it's funny because it, because when I was doing a lot of the human portraits and I was constantly found myself constantly looking at um, people looking at um, how their you know fe features are how their hair how the lighting you know falls on their hair and you know their face and all that stuff now that I'm doing mostly animals I'm finding myself doing the exact same thing where I am just completely absorbed with watching um nature shows and, um, you know, movies of that, of that kind.
but if you are, um, if you haven't seen The Lion King, I don't know how I, what made me take so long to, to see it, but if you haven't seen it, um, I highly, highly recommend going, uh, you know, putting it on and watching it because it's really good. <laughs> Part of me feels like I need a little bit of blue um, on that highlight because it seems like that's what I'm seeing in the reference photo. A little bit of blue. So let's try sky blue polychromos. It may not make much difference, but it might, it might. Okay, oh, I guess I should take that out. All right, let's keep going with this eye a little bit. We're, we're getting there. Um, burnt Umber Polychromos. Warm gray, somewhere here. Warm gray six, actually, right underneath. Really, really light pressure. You don't need a lot of pressure on the drafting film. I think um, that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that I, I see um, people who are new to drafting film make is that they're just, they're applying the same kind of pressure that they're used to applying on paper. And especially on your first layers, um, you definitely don't need to do that because it just then... Um, you're, you're going to find you're going to run a you're going to run out of layers and B um, you're not going to get those f those fine details because when you press hard your lines get thicker um, so yeah when you're first as you're getting the feel for the drafting film, just make sure that you use light pressure to start. Okay, I'm okay with that. Um, I wanna come back over to this, to this eye. What did I do right there and why did I do it? Oh yes, okay, I see. That is, that is this. some of these actually I think we want to put the light in first and the dark in over the top when I was doing the lion um, I realized that uh, 
you got to be careful because this is so slick. It's really easy to drag the dark colors into the light when you don't want to. So if you can put your lights down first and then add your darks in, that often works better. So I'm going to use Buff Titanium um, uh, Luminance um, because, again, I really like the luminance for the fur parts because it's almost like when you apply the uh, pencil, it's, it sticks up a little bit on the um, paper. It, um, it doesn't lay down as flat. <laughs> I don't know how else to, to describe it. Um, it doesn't lay down as flat as the as the uh, polychromos does. So it, if you use um, the luminance in light colors with your hair, you can then come in with um, with your other colors, and it almost just goes in and leaves the luminance alone and just puts the color down in between if that makes any sense at all I don't... it just gives a nice it gives a nice texture um, to work with so okay so I need to go further down I didn't go down near far enough with this because Pretty sure that this line right here is my um, is this line right here. So let's get this a little bit thicker. So I do like to work with a sharp pencil if I can um, when I'm doing my fur, the hair piece, you know, bits. And I also have been liking, and this is just m me, and it's not even necessarily in the reference photo, but I kind of like using a little bit of um, brown or, or sepia. It kind of has a transition between the black and the light colors. That's just, I guess that would be considered um, artistic license. I'm not sure what I have going on here. This is the black. This is this right here. So I think I think this comes down just even a teeny little bit further. Okay, I don't think I want to go to that yet. Let's um It's kind of, actually the best thing to do would be to work from here and come this way, but I just, I have a hard time doing that. Uh, so we may just have to, to um, you know, cover any work that we do with some, with some uh, film. In fact, I probably should do that here now. Not film, this is, um, what is that called? <laughs> oh God, I hate it when the brain stops working. It's very frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'll think of it. It'll come to me. I'm gonna switch to um, brown ochre. Titanium 
up here because this is a little bit lighter. You know, I think I'm going to use buff titanium above the eye too and then use something else to um, darken it. But you can see how um, I have to be really careful because I should have put my whites in first. Because if you go from the darks up, you're going to drag that black right out. all the way out here to this one. Then I think I will use, let's see what um, brown ochre 50% looks like. Might be too, let's see what are our other choices here. Could try Beaster in. I'm just gonna kind of play around with some colors here for a minute until I kind of figure out what I want to do here. It needs to be kind of yellowy. I don't want to go too yellow though, too dark. You know, it needs. To, I want that to stay light. This is cream. That's not going to be dark enough, probably. Okay, so I think I think I'll go with Polychromos Brown Ochre, but I'm going to just barely touch it to the film, and it. It puts quite a bit of color down without having to press very hard at all. All right. Let's... I kind of feel like I want to just work my way in a section then add the black in. We'll work around the black bits. I think that's going to be our best bet. Um, this is Luminance Brown Ochre 50%. Try a little bit of that. And then the Burnt Umber Polychromos. Um, and I'm just going to make little, almost like dots. sepia. Sepia is not as... Get that in my hand here. Dark sepia in polychromos. What I love about the drafting film is that I can get right to the details. I don't have to put down layer upon layer upon layer of color pencil before I finally can get to the details. I can work the details right from the beginning and just and just expand my um, my piece as I go, and I love that. But 
put this on real light. I'm almost, it almost feels like I could call it glazing. So I don't want the texture, I just want the color down first. And then I'm going to add some more. Oh, I want this to be yellower. Um, this is brown ochre, but let's see. Is there anything else I can use that's maybe raw umber? That's a little bit more yellow. That's better. And if I want to, I can add a little bit more light. Okay, let's do, I think we'll just spread out from the, from the, all around the eye, just work our way. Let's put some gray. And then back to the black. Really, I probably should have used um, luminance gray. Because then we could just, we could just go right, feather right over the top of it. Silver gray. That might be too light. Uh, what do we want? Payne's gray. That's going to be too blue. That's the only thing I don't like about my polys is that the the choice of grays are really limited. Yeah, that may not work. So, never mind. Never mind. You can always um, uh, scrape out. You know, we can always use the. Now I should not be. I don't want to get carried away with this black because, <sighs> again, um, I want to be careful not to pull black into an area that I don't that I don't want it in, but. For my eye, visually, I like to see, I like to get some of those darks in. But I have to, sometimes you have to learn to control your to, yourself. This is um, the Luminance Black. You can see how much darker it is than the Polychromos Black. Let's, um, what colors do we want to use? Okay, so I'm going to put some of this in here, I think. Uh, brown ochre. Ochre ten percent. All right, now we can put some of this black in.
Um, I don't think I mentioned the size of my piece. The, um, the drafting film is cut to like eight, eight and a half by 12. And then I'll, I'll mount it, um, to an 11 by 14. Okay. Um, burnt Umber Polychromos. I feel like I made that too um, long. I think I'm going to have to figure out um, a plan. Either open up my iPad and make sure that it's the exact size of my reference photo or reprint this one and make sure that it's the exact size because it's hard for me. I need to um, I need it to be the same. And this looks smaller than it uh, than it should be from for what I'm doing. Okay, let me just so here's my this is where it starts getting a little bit more difficult for um, filming purposes because I do switch back and forth quite a bit um, with my papers, with my paper that goes behind um, the piece. So, uh, where are those papers? Here. Okay, so I'm going to slide a white one in under here. and make some marks actually I probably don't have enough black on here yet gray four. white work up. So 
So brown ochre, 10%. This part right here, this part right here is this part right here, and I want it to be, I want all those little hairs to look like they're going in all different directions right here. So I am going to actually use the white, even though um, we'll go over it, and then that will make it not quite so bright white. go over that with this is the brown ochre 50% and I'm I'm just glazing it's kind of it's kind of interesting how the different um, pencils feel on the film okay this is Burnt Umber Polychromos. I think that works okay. Um, if we do brown ochre 50 over the top of it again, just barely, just really lightly, I think that'll give me the lightness that I want there. here. Let's try this brown ochre 50%. Gonna do that in here a little bit. Debating on uh, putting the black in for a little bit of this. Let's do a little bit of this. This is the brown over 10%. Let's just get some of that on top of the these bits where the black is going to go. quite a difference in the color. <laughs> we're, 
or depending on if my hand is in there. That's because I stopped using that, oh, that app. I just don't know what I'm going to do about color. And I got tired of that other app crashing on me, so... A little frustrating. Huh. Well, hopefully it doesn't bother you guys too much. Okay, let's put some black in. Uh, at least in here. Still want to always make sure that your um, pencil strokes are going the direction of the fur. And then um, again with these polys, you always kind of have to add a little bit of extra layering to get it. What am I going to do about this camera? I feel like it's shaking terribly. Turning your pencil as you um, work, again, kind of helps to keep um, a little bit of a sharper edge. Uh, I'm thinking that I'm going to need to tone down some of this color here. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. I think it's too... I don't know. It's too something. I don't know what. Too orangey. I don't know. We need to bring some, uh, what is that color in polychromos? Nougat. work this a little bit first. So I'm going to take my burnt umber
And I'm kind of just going to go around where the black is. Maybe I want sepia instead for that. Let's see. Yeah. I think I want sepia instead. We're going to come in with our slice tool here too in a second. And I'm kind of using this dark umber to soften the, the, the edges and the blend of where one color goes into the next. Okay. Um, I feel like this whole time you have not been in... <laughs> It hasn't. Sorry about that, guys. There, is that better? <laughs> Jeez Louise. Okay. Let's pop a little bit more dark under here. This is the dark sepia. It's nice because it's dark, but it's not quite as dark as black. Um, yeah, see, already, already some of these bits that I could have sworn I had a lot darker earlier are already lightening up. And you just kind of got to keep going over them. Slice tool. Before I do that, I'm looking at this, and I feel like I really want to darken some of these. And because I used the luminance on here. kind of squeeze my polychromos in there between the marks that I made with the luminance to darken it up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to just make a few marks into the black. Gonna pull out that um, nougat. And add that in here. And then we might try something. Well, I know we're not getting very far, but I do want to show you some kind of cool techniques that I'll use. So I pulled out the nougat because it's not, it's not a very warm color. It's not as warm as um, any of the other light browns. And that's what I want. I don't want to bring more warmth in. I want to just kind of maybe cool it down just a touch. That looks, that looks pretty good. Okay, so what I have discovered 
if I throw this textured paper down, it kind of acts as a, um, it kind of acts like it's ch it changes the tooth of the drafting foam. And so <clears throat> I've found that I can um, basically get more tooth when I add a toothy paper underneath the drafting film. So now I can, I can come in with my white pencil and it will actually make marks on top of the other colors that I have on here. Yep, and so I get these little light highlight hairs um, right on top of what I've already worked on, which is really lovely. So there you go. That, that's looking good. that I have you that I'm using here in my hand. Get this one. Um, and let's put some, so this is the brown ochre 10%. Let's get some of that going up here. I don't think we need lighter than that. Just looking at see where I'm at here. This dot, this one, there's the double, there's that. So I think I missed marking in a couple right there. Yep, I did. Okay, so this is the new gut.
since this is pretty light, before I add any more um, heavier dark, I'm going to put some of this um, burnt umber in. Rather than having to extract the black and then add it in, I'm just going to add it in a little bit of it in right now because there's, and then we'll use the a little bit of this. Mm, I'm not sure if I want to use the slice tool or my um, my mono eraser. Okay, where <laughs> where is it? There it is. Okay. Um, let's just try. Some more, whoops, black, some more black. Just using really light pressure even on the slice tool, because I don't want that to be too heavy. Okay, let's put some more black, since we have. This one. kind of stop halfway there since I have to put some lighter colors in on the other side. Alright, this time I want to use the um, burnt Burnt umber. God, I hope this thing's in focus. Yeah, it is. It's just burnt umber. Even put some, a few more distinct dark marks in here. I'm going to sharpen my, and it's just, it just needs the time the littlest bit in my electric sharpener. I could even maybe sharpen it um, on a piece of sandpaper or something just to give it a little bit heavier point. Okay, so just curious about some I think we need this to be a little bit lighter. This is looking too light right in here. This needs to be darker. Maybe we'll use sepia.
Dark Sepia Polychromos. Feels pretty good. You want a little bit more. Can't believe we're already at an hour and 15 minutes and I haven't even gotten <laughs> hardly anything done yet. Well, actually, actually, that's right about, that's about right because it seems like these tend to take me about nine nine or ten hours I guess total all right I'm going to take I think I want a little bit darker in here but I don't know what to take maybe just the dark sepia maybe I haven't used that yet I'm just gonna put a few even darker little, they're little shadows, they're little, that's better. All right just for just because let's just work down here a little bit um, no I want to soften this a little bit this is um brown ochre ten percent and just curious yeah really putting that um that texture paper behind makes a big difference in how much your your light colors will show on top big 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 difference all right let's do Trying to decide what to do down here. I guess this is okay. This is the brown ochre ten percent. I kind of feel like I want to put this in a in a uh, extender. But these don't work. These don't fit. Hmm. Okay. This is my problem with ex luminance and extenders. They don't fit in the small ones and they don't fit in the big ones. Wow. What do I use? How have I not run into this problem with luminance before? I don't know. I think I haven't run into this problem with luminance yet because I'm just now kind of getting short on some of these. So what do we do? Well, we can take, what do you guys do? I would like to know that. Let's try So I'm just taking a piece of paper. Actually, it's a post, a, uh, what do you call it? A, a post-it note and wrapped it around. Let's see if I can get that to go in now. There we go. Okay, so that worked. So 
these um, extenders, these work great. The small end works great for um, my polys and my prismas. And the big end, if you wrap it in paper, yay, <laughs> will now hold inside the um, small end, or the big end. So I have no idea if I said that right, but I think you get, I think you get the message. <laughs> I think you get the point. Okay, so... I've discovered that if I can avoid using the slice tool, I like it better. Um, sometimes the slice tool can be a little hard looking, a little harsh. So um, using these luminance Especially if I just kind of, I don't know if you guys can see, maybe you'll be able to see it better when I put the second layer on. Um, when I'm, when I'm making my marks, they're, they're going on, they're all going in this direction, but they're not going straight parallel to each other. They're kind of overlapping a little bit and being a little squiggly. Um, let's try this one, brown ochre, 50%. Let's use, uh, let's use burnt umber polychromos. I want the hair to look, you know, I want you to be able to see the texture of the hair, but I want to be careful not to have it be really harsh. I want it to be soft and fluffy looking. All right, let's put the black in here. Slice tool though does is really great for when I want to pull the hairs into the black. I do especially like it for that. going to put some, I can see right now that I kind of got the, um, the hair is going a little bit in the wrong direction here. So I'm going to go over it with the um, burnt umber polychromos. And here, 
here we got pretty, it's pretty dark. Oh, that's the edge of the, never mind, that's the edge of the black. So let's put some more of that in real quick. little bit more of the burnt umber in the polychromos. Maybe some uh, nougat. All right, now I'm going to take the slice tool and try and do this so I don't get my hand in the camera. Just on the um, on the outer edge. All right, almost ready for the next thing. And then I think we'll wrap this video up. It's kind of nice to keep them at about an hour and a half. It works better for me uploading too. black. You could also use Derwent Drawing Black. Um, if I want to go really, really black, I might pull that out. It is funny how um, just in the course of working the piece, I'll look up and go, I, I could have sworn it was darker than that before. It's just, I wish I could, I wish somebody could tell me where they went. <laughs> where did that color go? I don't know. Okay, so now I'm going to slide my textured paper in here. <laughs> I think. Okay, and then I'm going to take, I don't think I'm going to, let's try uh, instead of white, the buff titanium. And 
And when I make these other um, hairs, I kind of want to make sure that I go in a in a slightly different direction than the than what the hairs are doing underneath, so that it adds um, a bunch of a bunch of different layers, and you can kind of see that the hairs are all kind of going in the same, but not the identical direction. I don't know if you can see how much texture there is going on there, but there's a lot of great texture right there. Um, and I'm really happy with how, how that looks too. So, um, yeah, I would say that's not too shabby. It's, it's kind of um, interesting how different stuff looks, too, depending on what color paper you have behind um, your piece. It's like you take this away, and yes, everything gets brighter, but you also um, lose a little bit of that texture to some degree, too, because the paper underneath it kind of gives it a little bit more depth too. So yeah, I like it. I like it so far. So um, I think we will, um, we will stop for now. We'll keep these at about an hour and a half and um, I'll just keep on going on the next one. Maybe I'll try and reprint that and make sure that that's a little bit closer to the size or at least yeah I don't know anyway we'll do something so um thank you for uh for being here with me and um until I see you guys next time take care of yourselves and take care of each other and happy arting happy coloring all that good stuff and I'll see you guys next time bye